I'm not sure who needs to hear this message, but I promise you it's about to help you out. I just need a couple of minutes of your time. The first thing I want you to know, I think your breath stinks. I'm going to keep it real with you because I don't think too many other people are going to be honest with you. You got some funky breath, man. And people, when they be around you, they may not want to tell you, but I'm going to keep it real with you because I'm trying to tell you what, what's going what's gonna to help you. Let me talk to you for a second. See, yesterday I went to the dentist. And if I'm being honest, I get a little nervous before I go into the, you know, into the, to the dentist to get my teeth clean. Because I think I do a decent job at brushing my teeth and flossing. But <laughs> when that dentist, when you laying down in the chair, you know how you lay down like you be in a coffin like this right here. Once they put on them little, them little glasses with the little goggles on them that magnify everything. They can see everything that's going on in your mouth. They can tell how much you've been brushing, if you've been flossing, how attentive you've been to your teeth. They may ask you just to be nice and say, hey, Demarcus, you still, you know, brushing and flossing? Like, that's just conversation. But they can see what's going on. They know if you're telling the truth or not. You and that talking about, yeah, I floss three times a day. They look at your mouth like. He talking about doing that floss dance. You know that dance I'm like, kids be doing? He, you might be talking about doing the flaws, Dan, because you ain't been. Ain't no flaws have been going on in here. So, look, I went into that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and you know, <laughs> they cleaning my teeth and it gets time to floss. And I got to be honest with you. When they when when they floss, this the lady I had this dentist I had. It ain't nothing like I floss. See me, I go down, up. Down, up, down, I go all the way around. This lady pushed that thing so hard down in here. And then, you know, I'm thinking she about to go up. Because, you know, you try to kind of brace yourself because it's you know, your gums be bleeding a little bit. This lady pushed that thing down. Then she pulled to the right like that. Then she pulled to the left like that. Then she came up. Man, I'm I'm doing like that. I'm like, ooh. And in my mind, I was about to say, hold on, I don't know if I, I don't know if I could do this. Like, you could just stop with that one tooth. I'll get the rest at home. Then I realized something, Demarcus. Boy, you need to hold fast. Because this is the kind of cleaning that you need. This is how you're supposed to be flossing your teeth. Then she went to the next tooth. Went down. Boom. I'm, I'm wiggling like a little kid in the chair. Ain't no shame in my game. Mm. And I thought to myself, once she got back here, keep it real. Can I be real? Can I be real? Once they get way back here, hey, we don't be back there like we supposed to, dog. <laughs> I mean, we do so. We don't be way back there like we supposed to, dog. Man, this lady, boop, 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 boop. I say, man, oh, my, I, I couldn't even talk for a few hours after I left there. And listen to me. And I'm going to be real. I smelled a little odor. You know what I'm saying? I'm Hey, can I keep it real? So I, I'm sharing this to try to help you out. Like we all, we got to do better. I know when I'm around my wife, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I need to be able to do better. My breath probably been stinking, dog. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to help you out. Maybe, you know what I mean? I'm trying to help you. So. You got to understand when these when these dentists, when they get into your teeth, wave, see, they're the professional. They can see everything through them things they put on their eye. They can see if see you might have you might have went out to a restaurant about seven months ago and ate some steak. You know what I mean? You know how you get it medium well. You ate steak, but you don't know what's trapped way back there in your teeth, way back there. Sometimes they pulling things out that we are holding on to without realizing it. It's been stuck in your teeth so long. The smell and the odors. That you don't even realize it. You around here. Hey, what's up? You all in everybody facing. They like, and that dude don't never brush his teeth. That's how some people feel. And then I realized something. Boy, in the middle of the floor. I think she was on here at this too. I was like. Boy, that's what the word of God do to our situation. His word says, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. Listen to me. 
We holding on to cares that's here. Fear, doubt, unbelief, unforgiveness. We holding on to stuff from six years ago that happened. And we carrying it. Just because you can carry it well doesn't mean you should, you, you should be carrying it. If I hold up a one pound dumbbell like this, you would probably say, that dude's strong. Look at him. He holding that dumbbell out. Well, check back with me in 30 minutes. My arm will be shaking. Check back in me in four hours. I'll be in a fell on the ground. Why is that? You, no matter how light the load over a long period of time, it will damage you. And there's stuff that God wants to clean up and get out of our system and renew our mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? By getting into the word. How do you renew your mind? By getting into the mind of Christ, which is his word. Because his word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. And guess what? He created you. <laughs> If I invented a toy, right, and I laid it on the ground, if you walk by, you look at the toy and say, man, what is this? I don't know what this is. You need to talk to the inventor, right, if you want to know about the invention. So you'll come to me and say, hey, what is that you created? I say, oh, that's called a boomerang. You throw it hard as you can and it come right back. Got it? God is the inventor and you're the invention. So you got to talk with him to see why he created you and what your purpose is. And now you have identity. Now you're like, oh, that's a boomerang. Now, now you know how to throw it. Now you know how to use it. Now you can have fun out there in the park with the boomerang and see you. God wants you to have some fun, but you got to get into your purpose. <laughs> it ain't no fun being confused and lost. You got to talk to him about your purpose. And God will begin to groom you and develop you. And listen to me. He want to, I'm telling you, all you don't realize what you're holding on to until you get into the word. Listen to me. Now, can I be honest with you? Sometimes I get into the word. The markers, you know, you need to let go of this. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I was home. The markers, you know, you need to do that. The markers, I got this. You got me? You got me? See, you start, you, you go to read the Bible, but the Bible starts to read you. The Bible starts to read you. That's why it's so important to get into the word of God. Boy, early I was reading in Daniel chapter 6. That's what I need you to read today. If you don't do nothing else today, read Daniel chapter 6. Long story short, they were hating on Daniel. You feel me? So they went and told the king, you know, that Daniel shouldn't be praying to God, right? So what they did, they put him in the lion's den. In some situations, you're going you're gonna to be doing right by people and they still come against you. They put him in the lion's den. And they rolled the stone o o over the exit. So Daniel couldn't get out of there. The Bible say that the person that put him in there, which was the king, he couldn't sleep that night, boy. He was troubled in his spirit. And the king came back and opened it up and, and looking for Daniel. Daniel was still in there. Why is that? Daniel say, my God, closed the mouth of the lions, boy. Do you know who in here with me? He closed the mouths of the lions. <laughs> I'm ready to tell you, no matter what you're going through, you may be in a lion's den right now. God is right there with you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were in the fire, God was in there with them and they were not consumed. Read Daniel chapter 6, boy. Because sometimes you're going to find yourself in a Daniel situation. You wonder why so many people are against you. It's because of the anointing that's on you. It's because of the purpose that's on your life. And you ain't doing nothing wrong to nobody. Some people that just hate you for no reason. It's not you they hate. It's that spirit of God in you. It's the, it's the spirit of God in you. But you know what? You got to keep going anyway. It really don't matter. It don't matter what comes against you. If God can shut the mouths of the line, that tells me I have no reason to be afraid. And surely I don't need to be fearful. What they stand for? Face, uh, uh, uh. Man, I forgot my acronym. Slow down, DeMarcus. You're trying to go too fast. All right, let's slow it down. You ain't got no reason to be afraid today and you sure ain't got no reason to fear. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. It also stands for forget everything and run. But God wants you to see F-E-A ears. Face everything and rise. Face it, trace it, erase it, then replace it. F, you're forgetting the goodness of God. E, you're envisioning the worst and not the best. A, you've accepted defeat before the fight and are you rejecting God's way of doing it. Don't accept defeat before the fight. Don't get into the lies. Then it's say, oh, y'all about to bite me on my elbow. No, no. Oh, you stand tall and say, my God is with me up in here. It don't matter who against me. That's first John 4, 4. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. What that mean though, Demarcus? The task that's in front of you is never, 
greater than the power that's inside of you because it's Jesus on the inside working on the outside. He'll clean you up like that floss. He'll show you what your purpose is just like an invention and he'll protect you from the lions of this world, boy, because you're built different and you're a child of God. It don't matter what come and get you. You got to have all kinds of stuff going on in your life. People ain't going to lie on you. People ain't going to do all kinds of stuff, man. You got all kinds of stuff going on in the but you can't worry about it. You got to keep going. Because if I know. My bad. I'm breathing this in. If I know my God is a washing machine. I ain't got no reason to worry. Because I'm going to dive into his word. And he's going to clean me all up. That's why we got to get into the word daily. Get into what you're into. Whatever you're into. Get into it. Choose today to get into your word. And make sure you read Daniel chapter 6. Because God going to always be on your side. I love you so much. If you made it to the end of this video, I need you to hit the like button. Then I need you to comment the word, my God is with me. Because that's right. <laughs> he been with you the whole time. He knew you before you was born. Boy, you had a purpose before anybody had an opinion. So don't worry about what the world saying. You stick with your God who going to be with you every single step of the way. Your identity is with divinity. You elected and selected, appointed and anointed for such a time as this. And God going to use you in a mighty way. So why not spend some time with him? I love you so much. I'll see you in the next video.